Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the new MD prop system with iClone 8.5 that enables your character to interact with various objects in your scene, similar to a point and click video game. You can record and later customize these animations for a super efficient and intuitive production workflow. In the content manager, you'll now find a dedicated MD props category under props, and in the top left of every item thumbnail, you'll see an icon which classifies the MD prop as one of five different types which we'll explore in this tutorial. Let's start with the basics of MD prop functionality. Like any prop, you can simply drag it into your viewport to apply it to your scene, and it will be indicated with an MD icon in the scene manager. In the attributes tab of the modify panel, you'll see an MD prop type. This one is classified as state change, as your actor will switch states between sitting and standing when interacting with it. MD props generally consist of a dummy mesh, which can be swapped out, as well as a position dummy gizmo that indicates the orientation of the actor. You can toggle visibility for both in the scene manager. If we zoom out, you can also see a trigger range indicated by a surrounding green border, which is used for crowd interaction. Please check out the dedicated MD prop and crowd interaction tutorial for more on that. You can also activate or deactivate your MD prop from the scene manager. When connecting an existing mesh like this bench with your MD prop dummy, be sure to attach your mesh to the parent MD prop item in the scene manager and not the sample mesh, so you can hide the blue dummy mesh without affecting your bench mesh. Dummies won't be rendered in your final render by default, however you may want to toggle dummy visibility during your production without affecting target mesh visibility. The dummy meshes can be useful as placeholders for scene blocking during the production process as well. Once you enter motion director play mode, you can mouse over any MD props to highlight them, and click on them to bring up a radial menu of actions. When one is selected, it will be added to the action menu at the bottom left, and your actor will perform it. Once seated, the actor is linked with the MD prop, and you'll see character and sit on chair options in the radial menu. Sit on chair will contain the actions attributed to the MD prop. In this case, this is a super simple MD prop, so there is only one action, stand up. You can interrupt your actor's interaction with an MD prop by alt-clicking anywhere in your scene to navigate your actor there. Or you can use the WASD controls to do the same thing. Choosing an action from another MD prop will also exit your actor's current state. In the macro data tab of the MD controls panel, you'll find all of the data for your past takes. You can save these and preview them, or create a motion clip in the timeline for your actor. To replace the dummy mesh of your MD prop, simply right-click and drag your desired mesh from the content manager, ensuring that the yellow selection box appears first. This method is different from our previous attached method, as this one will completely replace the dummy mesh as opposed to adding it to the hierarchy alongside the dummy mesh. Okay, let's explore how we can customize the structure of our MD props next. In this scenario, we want to have our actors look at a sign in wall poster, so I'll bring in this observe MD prop and position it properly. It's important to note here that we don't want to adjust the height of this MD prop as it will have no effect on the eye line of the actors. You can manually adjust this later if needed. Let's proceed to attach the meshes to the MD props as we did before. Again, being sure to attach to the parent item in the hierarchy and not the dummy mesh. When we enter into play mode, we can get our actors to perform those actions, however they'll look directly at eye level initially, so let's adjust that. Each MD prop will have a unique structure, along with a number of basic options which you'll be able to find in the MD tab of the modify panel including a look at checkbox. To adjust the look at point, we need to go into edit structure, where we'll find a look at point dummy gizmo, 
which we can adjust the position for manually in the viewport. Upon entering into play mode, you'll see that our actors will now look at the modified dummy position while walking, however when performing the actual observe action, they still maintain the original eyeline. To fix this, we need to go into the Behavior Settings tab of the MD Behavior panel. Beside the Observe Perform action, you'll see an icon for Look At settings. Here, we want to deselect Disable for Perform. This ensures that our Look At status will still be maintained despite the actor performing an action, such as the Observe action here. Be sure to do this for either or both male and female IMDs according to the gender of the actor performing the Observe action. In order to avoid movement through various prop meshes in your scene that may be in your actor's path, you can utilize the Nav Mesh tool. You can generate a Nav Mesh from the Create menu. There are various parameters here that allow you to tweak the shape and dimensions of your Nav Mesh, which we explore in more detail in the dedicated tutorials. When you generate it, please ensure that the Nav Mesh covers the position point dummy gizmo, otherwise your actor will be prevented from entering that position and won't trigger the action. You can tweak the cell size, radius, and minimum area size values here to get a more refined nav mesh area closer to the borders of the prop meshes. Lower max height and slope values will ensure that the nav mesh remains close to the ground plane. Now when we test again, you'll see our actor will avoid the props in the middle of the scene. Okay, finally let's take a look at a scenario with a more complex MD prop in this vending machine. This MD prop type is portable, meaning that after interacting with it, the actor will take an object along, in this case a drink can. If we look at the structure of this MD prop, you can see that it contains five beverage mesh dummies inside the main vending machine mesh. Let's test out the buy action first. You'll see our actor will retrieve one of the beverage meshes from inside the machine and take it with him. Next, let's find a suitable mesh to replace the beverage dummy. The Align command is a great way to get props in your scene perfectly aligned without messing around with the movement gizmo. Control L is a great hotkey to keep in mind as you'll use it often. Very important here is to attach your replacement mesh to the child beverage MD dummy and not the beverage 1 numbered dummy in the hierarchy. Another easier way to replace the dummy mesh is to simply right click and drag your replacement mesh from the content manager. Finally, you'll also want to replace the vending machine dummy mesh itself. Once you've done that, you can give it another whirl to test the results. That's it for this intro tutorial to MD Props. We hope you find this new feature useful and are looking forward to seeing it in your projects. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.